instructions have been given, and we start this battle between the AWA World's Champion Nick Bockwinkle and Chavo Guerrero. There's Nick Bockwinkle, Chavo Guerrero, former junior heavyweight champion of the world. This is a non-title match. Bockwinkle told Chavo to go get a reputation before he could have a battle for the title. But then non-title matches are perhaps as old and as ancient as title matches because the privilege a champion has is to enter a match without defending his title for whatever reason in his own mind. And unless the championship committee of the AWA sees fit to order Bachwinkle into it, Bachwinkle himself can avoid people or meet them in non-title matches. And he himself is a man perhaps of a little bit superior intellect and in his own mind, superior ability to think and to out-wrestle his opponents. So he tests Chavo, and his hope is that he's going to put Chavo to shame and come out of that ring not only with a victory, but that he will have shown these people, you see, I was smart when I said this man did not deserve a title match. Chavo must, must overcome the weight advantage, but he has done that before in many surprising matches. Body slam and Nick Bockwinkle again demonstrating his technique of now trying to say, look, I outclass this man and therefore I should get the match right now having demonstrated that fact. So Ch uh, Bockwinkle gets that feeling of, well, I got this guy where I want him. It comes to every athlete. And suddenly, Chavo Guerrero comes to life, and Chavo doesn't stand around after having flipped his man or bounced his man. And listen to the uproar now as they back Chavo Guerrero here in an effort to establish his credibility with fans and with Nick Buckwinkle. So now, Chavo having tasted what Bachwinkle can do, Bachwinkle having suddenly had the tables reversed, he takes a side headlock, one of his favorite moves. He thinks that takes a lot out of a man. And there is a quick move by Chavo Guerrero as he comes out from underneath, rolls with it, and comes up with a standing arm lock. There's the pressure, and as Chavo pours it, bends it down, we've got the effort made by Chavo Guerrero paying off. He has forced him down to one knee, he is able to then apply his weight, but it's Bachwinkle who does the forcing away. He knows that if uh, Chavo gets a free hand up there, that arm is going to give him trouble. Figure four arm lock, well applied. Now, arm bar, difference. He straightens out that arm, he gets the pressure underneath the elbow, and tries to straighten it out. But you've got to keep shifting, keep changing, just when you think a man is about to get out of a hold or to be able to switch it, you've got to make your move. Chavo drops in there and drops in there hard. So Hamelock is Chavo's grip, and Bachwinkle prone on that canvas, suddenly finds that the man he was belittling, and he started off this match, I thought, in a supercilious manner and trying to make light and small of Chavo, but now he suddenly finds that uh, Chavo is giving him all that he can handle. Nice bridge by Bachwinkle to keep his shoulders up, but that doesn't mean that he has won the match. That merely means he's got a strong neck, but he's expending a lot of energy in trying to keep that referee from getting a three count. Still Chavo's hold, he added to it, came close to getting the fall, 
and that near fall made Buckwinkle work. Five minutes. Five minutes have gone by. There's the pressure on the arm. And again, he puts a twist on it. He has an arm bar, he works on it, so it goes all the way up to the shoulder. And from elbow to shoulder, it is all Chavo Guerrero's effort. And Nick, having taken the pressure, is now in trouble. Chavo, Chavo looks to be in great shape. He is the son of his father. There is no question about that. His father was a, a dedicated trainer, a driving shoulder butt. Chavo steps in there and keeps after him. Both these wrestlers, the, the champion in this non-title match and the challenger, are second-generation wrestlers. Chavo, son of Gory Guerrero, former world's light heavyweight champion and junior heavyweight champion. Nick Bockwinkle, son of Warren Bockwinkle, who was a great star in his own right. But on this card here at the Sam Houston Coliseum, tonight there are six wrestlers, six wrestlers that have known the wrestling game from the time that they were old enough to walk. Men like Ted DiBiase, like Tiger Conway Jr., Matt Bourne, son of Tony Bourne, Mike Sharp, son of Mike Sharp, and whoa, and it's uh, Chavo on top. There is a quick whirling dervish move that slammed Nick Bockwinkle not only down to the canvas, but into the canvas. And Chavo hangs right on there, and he has now demonstrated to Nick Bockwinkle that perhaps his overconfidence was poorly used. Same arm, same, different hold, a little bit different nuance of pressure on there. And as he keeps working on it in figure four fashion, you can see him as he jerks it and upsets him and puts him on his back. Chavo dropping in there for sure. Chavo comes in with both knees that time and caught it from Nick Bockwinkle. Bockwinkle reached down into his bag of tricks and put a stop to the punishment that was coming his way. And as he comes in, he slaps on a body scissor, which is, again, something that comes with experience. He has just had his arm worked over and jerked from side to side, and literally, you notice that it's right around the elbow. I mentioned before that he, the pressure was around, around the elbow. And... Bockwinkle is in as stern a test as he has been given in this ring, and he has met some tough individuals. But so has Chavo. Chavo has beaten Hacksaw Duggan and half a dozen other of the top men of the game in the Mid-South area for sure, and he is trying now to keep the champion from aiding and abetting the Body scissor. Bockwinkle in behind. Bockwinkle trying now to bounce Chavo, but Chavo recovered nicely and on his feet, and there he is, moving in again. And a double quick kick. Oh, man, how that worked beautifully. Chavo again, springing up to his feet. And Nick Bockwinkle must think that he is in there with a kangaroo, the speed with which Chavo Guerrero has leaped to his feet and the manner in which he has managed to astound Nick Bockwinkle, beautiful to behold. Note that the same arm is, is, is used there and that the elbow was straight, still straight. Even there, there we have 
a close-up picture as our director Ed Worthington moves in, gives you an idea of what's happening as Chavo changes the maneuver. The 10-minute mark comes up and Chavo with what we in wrestling call a Mexican move. He stepped around there and used the uh, leverage, and this is a quick move that is made by a number of good Mexican wrestlers. And Chavo is one of those. But he stepped in there to use his own foot as leverage and to bend that arm as he fell away from it. Bachwinkle. Now, trying to first get some leverage where he can move that arm without cracking his elbow. Chavo giving the turn. And, and Nick comes in close, giving him more of the arm, hoping he's going to destroy his leverage. And into the ropes goes Chavo. Well, oh, kicked him right in the kisser. And again, body slam. And the champion recovers enough, but he got that same pair of feet into his face and oh what a wham down for sure he didn't know whether he was coming or going he hit that mat so hard that when he rose up to his feet he didn't really know which foot to put forward and that's a bad predicament to be in and Chavo Guerrero hangs on tight he knows he's got an advantage he knows that he has whipped the champion off balance repeatedly in this match and that the body slams had to take their toll. So Chavo stands up. He puts that foot on in, be in behind the neck of Nick Bockwinkle for leverage and then drops in there so that his weight is going to have a telling effect. And Bachwinkle, you can bet, is wondering what in the devil happened to all of his plans to expose Chavo Guerrero as an easy mark and certainly not a man deserving a world championship shot. I'd like to take a vote on that right now. So Chavo follows him up, moves in close, stays tight. Japanese arm lock. Bachwinkle trying to get rid of him, does it. And this time as Chavo rushed forward, a first blow of the night thrown by Nick Bachwinkle. He's trying to set Chavo up for another one, this time for the knee, the upper part of the leg, the thigh, drive it in there and catch a man coming in and try to cut him in half. So now the fans screaming for Chavo. Holland, Chavo, Chavo, Chavo. And now Bachwinkle, seeing a little breathing room here, sees the opportunity to pound some of the fight out of Chavo Guerrero. And that turnbuckle can do it, I'll tell you. It's padded only to cover the iron part of it, and the padding is just as thick and hard as can be. Top man is Bachwinkle, but there comes that knee snaking up there, finding the top of Bachwinkle's head, but Bachwinkle is with it. Well, he was with it, and suddenly he finds himself on the receiving end. That was a forearm blow. There again, Chavo Guerrero comes in there with something his, his father taught him for sure. Well placed drop kick. We've got the champion again now on the receiving end, and oh, depending on the condition of the soles of Guerrero's shoes will depend the condition of Bachwinkle's face. On top, there's one, there's two, and close, close, close. There was a two count, a measured two count by the referee, and that's as fair as you can get in that this kind of a battle. There's one, there's two. And Chavo Guerrero trying his 
done this to get him down onto that canvas. 15 minutes have gone by as Chavo Guerrero is up. Oh, oh, oh. Bachwinkle was smart that time with, a, with the sagacity of a champion. He moved in there close and came down. And Chavo's in behind. He, he may have him. He may have him. He, he's got him. Chavo Guerrero, he asked me to come up here. Chavo, oh, I knew I could do it. I knew I could do it. And now, I want to ask you a little favor. I've been a friend of yours. I know you're the promoter. And all I want, you can't make promises, but you can't try to sign that match for me. I want the belt. He said he couldn't beat me, and I beat him. I want the belt. <laughs> Chavo, I'll tell, promise you one thing. I'm going to the AWA with this. You've proven that he was wrong. You've proven that you were right, that you deserve the championship match, and there's no question about that. You know, he questioned my integrity. He questioned my experience. He questioned my aptitude. Nick Buckwinkle, I have proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that I can beat you. And I think I'm next in line for that belt. It's got to be. I just beat the man right in the middle. One, two, three. I'm just asking you to use whatever you can to please give me that match. I'll do whatever I can. I'll do everything I can. Muchas gracias, amigos. Yo creo que se, yo de ser merezco una oportunidad al campeonato. Dijo que no le podía ganar, le gané. Por favor, díganle al señor Bosch que me consiga esa oportunidad. Aquí en Houston, muchas gracias. And I can tell you right now that what I promised him is that I'll go to work on it, and I'm going to go to work on it. He sure earned it, and I know if we took a vote, what you'd say. With me is AWA World's Champion, Nick Buckwinkle. And Nick Buckwinkle, you were defeated tonight, and yet you insist you're not going to give Chavo Guerrero a chance at the title oh, because gosh. he beat you? Oh, Bosch. You are a Texan, Chavo Guerrero is a Mexican Texan, Stanley Blackburn, president of the AWA, and head of the championship committee is a Texan. And this coveted belt that I hold is emblematic of the finest athlete in the world. And when a man comes along that can pin my shoulders for three seconds. He did, I, he I, pinned you. Oh, you seem so vehement. That's right, does because thou, you're vehement and refusing. Thou protesteth too much, Mr. Bosch? I protest this to the AWA Championship I Committee. I have had dozens of people tell me it was two and a half seconds. Two and a half seconds, you do not defeat a man. You do it in three seconds. Chavo Guerrero, you didn't beat me, but we're in Texas country, and I guess that's what the problem is. As far as I'm concerned, he never and should never get a heavyweight championship match for any reason whatsoever. And I will see what happens when I go to the AWA Championship Committee and present the case. Thank you. Yes, I'm sure you will.